seminar today. We have a big audience today. So it's my honor to, uh, to, me to, ha uh, to have uh, Professor Jörg Thunberger here to give us a talk about the LSTM, which is very popular in current uh, NLP research. And uh, Professor Jörg is a, a senior lecturer from the uh, University of Bayern. Uh, Let's welcome him. Uh, so yeah, as this um, uh, slide says, uh, I'm Yoav and I'll be talking about uh, doing stuff with STM. It's basically what I've been doing for the last uh, year or so because you cannot really avoid them. Um, and the plan of this uh, talk is basically some background on our STM, which I guess most of you know, but let's do it quick anyhow. And then we have like, some research and questions, and uh, this will actually be very uh, different stories, which don't really... So they have some structure between them, but let's see different stories. And I think right at the time, um, so uh, it's like it's something that will not make it to the uh, end anyhow. So just like uh, feel free to interrupt and ask questions as you go along, so we'll have time for uh, questions. Actually, it's a clock time, so I don't know how much of the time I have. Okay. Oh, no, okay. Oh, no, there, yeah, oh, I can see that. Okay, uh, so it's all about uh, deep learning, and as you know, it learns on its own, it works like the brain, it can do anything. Uh, it's pretty much true, although my experience, or my initial experience with deep learning for NLP, uh, was that uh, it actually cannot do uh, so much. I mean, it works uh, pretty well with proper tools, you can produce very easily kind of new innovative models, or like kind of new structures. Uh, it's not so easy to get good results. Uh, if you use only feed forward nets, then it's really hard to beat a good, a good linear classifier if you tune your uh, features well, this is my view. And on things like uh, 20 news groups, uh, Nervous and DFIDF wins over uh, various things. Uh, and you can get the other things to actually win, but it's, it's hard. And maybe it's different if you care to optimize things like crazy, but um, I'm a bit lazy about the computer, so it, it can't really work for me. Uh, but the uh, good thing about uh, uh, this world is basically that uh, semi-supervised learning is sort of easy, it works pretty well uh, with all embeddings. You just use them and they sort of work. Uh, and then uh, RNNs and LSTMs in, uh, in particular are really, really, really cool. Uh, and when I say LSTMs, also GRUs are the same thing, but uh, they just work extremely well, and that's really the kind of thing that we are talking about. And then um, this talk is about what I'm doing with Leche, which is doing stuff uh, with LSTMs. So at some point we uh, realized that LSTMs are very, very capable learners. And then we said, okay, look, let's use them to build stuff. And then we uh, build a lot of uh, various stuff, which I'll kind of uh, briefly go over now, and I'll describe some of and some not. But if you want, you can talk to me a little about those. So uh, Ellie there is doing uh, syntactic parsing with them and get really nice results um, with uh, Andrew Soltos from uh, Copenhagen and his group. Uh, we're doing various multitask learning stuff, which is kind of easy to do, and we're doing the chunking, tagging, compression, and so on. Uh, there is this work I did with uh, Werner Schwartz and uh, Igor Dagan about uh, hyperlimit detection. So Python means um, basically you, you get two words and you want to like uh, say animal and, and dog and you want to say are these hyperlimit or not. Uh, so you have to say yes for uh, uh, animal and dog and you have to say no for apple and dog or something like that. Okay, so that's the task and we have a, a, a network for that with LSTMs. Uh, we call it HypeNet. Uh, it got really nice reviews in uh, ACL. It was a uh, surprise, it didn't happen to me before. So <laughs> all sides. Uh, but uh, this is work. Um, we have a network for coordination that's uh, with uh, Jessica Fickler. Uh, we were doing also some work on morphological brain flexion, which is basically very similar to translation, but uh, you have a much smaller alphabet and um, uh, you also have a sequence set and they are also monotonic. Uh, but that's a cool task, we had nice results there. Um, and then with Hila, we're working on a uh, set to disambiguation uh, with some uh, semi-supervised component which we bootstrap based on uh, multilingual data, which is also sort of uh, multi-spelling kind of thing, which is easy to do with these models. And basically, 
Uh, we can get to his song results as again. Uh, the viewers really seem to like his song results. <laughs> and we can publish many papers, which is nice. Um, and yeah, so we, we have uh, different models. Um, as you can see, we are trying to be creative with them and do like not that kind of uh, very uh, default thing that you usually do. And also we are creative with how we draw them. Uh, like if we, each of them is uh, is drawn by a different person and looks completely different. <laughs> like, there is no one single way to draw at the end, which is a bit of a problem. We should probably decide on some different way uh, to go. It's really a very way to win with the field. Uh, okay, but uh, the other thing is that I think we should uh, try to do at the end is to try to uh, understand them uh, better, like uh, how they work, what do they encode, what can they do, what they cannot do, and so on. Uh, that's a bit harder, so it's hard to do, we are only kind of searching uh, uh, the, the, the service there. Most of you don't really care about this, so uh, they are actively engaged, but they don't use us. Uh, but if you do this, you get a really nice sense of self fulfillment. So uh, you should, and well, I'm doing that now, and uh, I think my talk, this half of it, or the major part, would be about trying to understand uh, what they do, and as I said, we're only searching the, the surface, and I think it's, uh, I like this kind of uh, line of work. So let's start with a brief intro to our lens, uh, just out of curiosity, who doesn't know what they are? Okay, everyone knows. So it's going to be very, very fast. Uh, so basically, uh, there are very strong models of uh, sequential data. Uh, there are functions from n vectors to a single vector. Okay? Uh, so you basically uh, fill in uh, word embeddings. So the vector for each word, and you get outside some encoding of this uh, uh, sequence, and there are trainable functions, okay? And there are various kinds of functions. There are the simple ones, the fancy ones, and the grappy ones. Uh, and uh, basically, like, uh, we'll be working with LSTMs, okay? And uh, we'll uh, be considering all of them as at the interface level. So I don't really care what goes inside them, but just like uh, we have some vectors coming in, and one. Uh, going out. So basically, uh, the way it works is you have your input vectors, x1 to xi, and you have one vector, uh, one vector by i, okay, and this and this output vector depends on all of the uh, xi that was were, were, were before that, okay, and they are defined recursively, and basically uh, there is a vector by i for every uh, prefix, okay, so uh, for every prefix you have its own uh, output vector. And um, these vectors on their own don't really do anything, but you can train them to do what you want, and then they are very predictive. Okay? And when you want to uh, train them to parts, you have to uh, define uh, how the function looks. Uh, definitely, uh, is it an LCM or a similar name or a GRU? Uh, uh, you have these uh, uh, parameters which you train, and you can have uh, these parameters or those parameters. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, and then you have to, uh, to define your loss to do what you want, okay? And there are various ways to define loss of LSTMs. Uh, one of them is what you call, uh, what, what I call an, an acceptor. You just try to uh, predict something from the end state. Uh, you get some loss based on that, and then you backwalk all the way uh, uh, to the uh, network. And then you uh, basically train it to capture uh, some uh, bit or some uh, multiclass of information um, from this sequence, okay? And the final vector is a good summary of the uh, sequence in a sense, okay? And then there is the, the transducer mode, which basically now you, uh, for each output vector, y, y, i, you try to uh, predict some label, and then you calculate the, the, the loss for that, you sum all of them, and then you, uh, you back or back, okay? So this is basically, uh, so if the, the previous one was just a classification that's tagging. Okay, so you have you want to assign uh, some some output for uh, every input word. Okay, and then uh, folks uh, in tagging uh, this model allows you to look at the past, but you may want to look also at the uh, future. So now you have a bilateral, which is basically uh, one of them reads the sequence from left to right, the other from right to left, and then you have uh, two vectors for each word. One of them uh, is uh, it's um, history, the other is, is its future, you, you can calculate them, and then you have uh, this vector that basically uh, represents uh, some window around uh, the world with infinite size. 
okay? Uh, and that's very useful. Okay? If you want to uh, go it differently, okay, so we have uh, the bound fox jumps over the dog, okay, and then uh, the word uh, jump has uh, two vectors on to its side, okay, uh, and it captures all of the uh, context of this word. And uh, a little bit deep, you can just restart them, so feed one to the other. Uh, deep is good, you get better results. Uh, you can have uh, deep by an end. Uh, which basically uh, starting by the next, okay? Uh, so that was basically the intro, okay? Uh, and I think my current favorite model now is those uh, deep violin ends. Uh, they provide an infinite window, window around some focus flow. Uh, they learn to, to extract what's important. They are very easy to train, and they are very good for uh, sequence tagging. Okay, so for example, here you have this uh, POS tagger, you just feed in uh, the words, uh, have the body stay with magic with a uh, uh, few layers, then you have some uh, MLP on top, uh, and then you do your uh, 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 position, greedily at each position, and you get very nice uh, post time results. Okay? Uh, and that's, okay, that's nice. Uh, you can also uh, change these things. So you have now, uh, so for like a uh, pair you can have an LSTM that reads in the uh, the the characters outputs a vector which would uh, be, then be uh, fed in uh, in in in, in sort of the world. Okay, and these are kind of uh, very very good tables. It was uh, inspired by uh, a work in CMU, but uh, people are using those now. And they're good. And then you say, okay, but uh, if it's the end, they need uh, so much data to, to train on. Uh, we should be using all tables. So we actually uh, try that, and they actually don't really need that much data. So we uh, compelled uh, TNT, which is an HLM tagger, by the CM tagger and uh, CRF on a bunch of languages, okay, um, uh, for tagging. And basically what we see is that uh, for uh, pure tagging, basically we need less than the, than the CRF to get the same results. And we break even with the HMM at about a maximum zero. So uh, for post tagging, you actually don't need that much data to train a, a good LCM model, which is nice, I think. And um, because you feed in uh, those uh, those uh, uh, particles, you also don't need to do those kind of uh, orthographic features, suffixes, and so on. Okay. So uh, deep LCMs are great tagging models, and more generally, they are very good uh, feature extractors. Okay, so let's do them for that. Yes? Did you have to change your parameters at all uh, on that code with the BIOS team? What do you mean? Your, whatever, you have your training parameters, your dropout, whatever, anything like that. Um, so... Anything that has to be training regimen or just push the button to different data sizes? Uh, that's pretty much what we did. So they are, they are quite robust. I think for each one of them, we tried like five different, different random seeds and uh, chose the best one. Uh, based on some uh, development set, but you know, they are pretty robust, uh, these things. Uh, you have to have a good optimizer though, so use Adam uh, and not SGD. But yeah, I mean, I, actually I, 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 I did not run these experiments, but Barbara did uh, at Copenhagen, but I don't think we did any tuning there. Okay, we just like uh, choose one to work and Okay, uh, and then uh, some other architecture uh, is this, uh, Sequence uh, to sequence, which I'm sure you are much more familiar with here because that's how translation works these days. Uh, so basically, you uh, have your LSTM encoder uh, that uh, encodes the sentence, and then uh, there is this uh, uh, decoder, which is a different LSTM that tries to uh, transduce something back from, uh, from it. And uh, one way to use them, which is kind of popular now, is, this, is an autoencoder. So uh, basically, you uh, feed in your uh, sentence uh, to your uh, encoder, and, uh, and then you try to uh, predict the same sentence uh, based on your uh, last vector. Okay? And uh, because this is the only connection between the, the, the two sequences, then this vector uh, must capture. So if you want to uh, to create well, then this thing must capture everything about the, uh, the sentence, or at least enough to be able to uh, recreate it. And then just uh, uh, throw that guy away, and then uh, what you hope to get is 
uh, some generic transcendental transportation which can, which can be trained uh, on like just raw data and then be plugged into other applications or at least that's the hope. Okay, so people uh, are really excited about using these kind of autoencoders to uh, get uh, generic vector uh, encoders for sentences. Okay, uh, and now let's put the background, now let's see some uh, first results. It's based on, around that, okay, so we have this uh, thing, and uh, as uh, uh, Ray Muni uh, said famously, uh, it cannot be that the whole vector will be crammed in this, uh, or this will become its uh, one vector, and then, well, maybe, maybe he's right, maybe he's wrong, but what, what, what we would like to, to ask is uh, what is crammed uh, into this uh, encoded vector, and um, this is work uh, with uh, Yossi Adi, who did uh, most of it, uh, or like most of the heavy lifting, and then uh, also um, lots of support from uh, Einat and Jonathan. Um, and there we're trying to basically figure out what is captured uh, by these, uh, in these vectors. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, the view of two, I'll uh, give you like, uh, what you're about to see is something which it will be uh, really presented, but with really bad motivation and <laughs> very slow experiments. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's at least uh, what you get as a review. Okay, uh, so our goal here is to analyze and uh, compare certain representations uh, in a way which is uh, independent of a task or a model. So it should work uh, on any uh, kind of um, uh, vector that you get. And it shouldn't be something like, okay, I can say if it's good for any R or if it's good for translation. It should be just like uh, capturing uh, properties of this representation and, and being able to compare different models based on these properties. Okay. And the idea here would be um, that uh, if you we we want to know what's in the vector, let's ask the, the vector what's in it. In the sense that we uh, design tasks to query uh, for specific kinds of information, and then we train the model to solve them and see how it does. Okay, and if it cannot uh, predict what we try to predict, then this uh, then this thing is not in the vector. And if it can, and if it does succeed, then the thing is in the vector. Okay, um, and this will give us a mechanism for for comparing different representations. And basically, the uh, idea here is that if we cannot train a classifier to extract some information, then maybe it is there, but I mean, for any particular person, it is not, because what you will do with it is train to classify it, to do it. Okay? Uh, so we focused on uh, three core aspects uh, of sentences. We deliberately did not do syntax or semantics at this point. We really want the three core aspects, which basically for us, uh, if you want to basically uh, know what's in a sentence, you should know how many words it has, which words are these, and what the, what's the order. Okay, and we then uh, compare different models by their ability to answer uh, these kind of questions. Okay, so we, we have uh, three, uh, three prediction tasks. One of them is uh, sentence length, so you get an encoding and you want to uh, predict the bean length. So we have eight beans of different types you want to uh, predict. Then for which word, we input a sentence encoding and a word encoding, okay? And we want to ask, is this word in the sentence? Okay, and let's just see if it can know which words are in there. And then the word order, you get a sentence and uh, two words in the sentence, and you want to know, uh, is A before B or the other way around? Okay. Yes? If uh, B appears twice, is that an answer okay? Sorry, if A appears between two Bs, is that an answer okay? Uh, then uh, I, I, I don't think we can call for that, but it's not very common. Well, uh, we, I think we did not, I mean, we tried to filter like uh, function words uh, from this. Uh, but basically, we just uh, pick two random words and then uh, either fit order or not and then ask. Okay, okay so, uh, so, so some words from that, let's see the, uh, the sentence length, okay? So, yeah. Can you say, why didn't you have also uh, the reconstruction of the full sentence oh, uh, as an evaluation metric? Okay, so we also uh, train this thing, uh, like uh, the, the, the autoencoder is trained using a um, uh, metric which is, um, so it's trained to actually reconstruct, okay? And we do measure blue, I, I don't uh, uh, show it here, 
Okay, but they are trained for that, so we don't try to um, predict this. But yeah, but I mean, uh, definitely for something that we're not trying to do, it, you could add this experiment as well. Yeah, but you could use that framework to do this prediction. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. I agree. We do it. Okay. I, I mean, uh, it seems like uh, it won't be, I mean, not, not very informative if, if you train something to, to do it and then it succeeds, then okay. Uh, okay. Um, like to begin with, like you, you, you achieve this, this uh, representation by um, just turning it to the graph itself. So, but if you do get there by some other means, then that proves that the information is in there? Yeah. I mean, so basically the, the decoder can do all stuff on its own. It can fill in missing words, for example, based on some language model. And we wanted to control for that. Make sense? Hopefully, maybe. We can talk later about uh, this decision. Yes. I think I missed the. How do you do the classifier? It's just a linear readout from the. Uh, from so, the encoder? Um, so we try to actually um, uh, not do the simplest thing ever, but to try to kind of uh, tune it. So we have, uh, I think, uh, two little written. Um, yeah, and MLP with uh, two million miles. And then it has to put it. The vector itself is its features? Yes. Uh, and so we, so we tried uh, different dimensions uh, of this STM uh, uh, decoder. Okay, and the accuracies uh, go up as you increase uh, the, uh, the dimension as expected. Okay, and it does <coughs> the position quite well, not extremely so, but like quite well. Uh, and uh, yeah, and it's kind of monotonic as you go. Uh, there is something happening it's in, in 750, but I don't think it's very uh, meaningful. And it's not here, but uh, the, the, the blue also goes up as you uh, go up with the dimension. Okay, and then we tried with the CBAR. Okay, uh, and, and, uh, and CBAR, if you don't know, uh, you basically uh, take, you train what to break, you take all of your words in your, uh, your sentence, this one, which is which with its vector, you sum them, and then you divide, you uh, do the average, okay? And then you have your sentence, and then, okay, how well will uh, CBO do? do? Uh, we said, okay, probably 22%, because it's an average model, it cannot do length, and it does <laughs> uh, much better than, than expected. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of our uh, first surprise, okay? Uh, it's really high for like eight class classification, uh, considering that it's doing an average, uh, presentation uh, and yeah, so somehow it encodes length and that kind of uh, surprised us. Uh, and it also surprised the viewer too, uh, who says basically this cannot happen, you must have a flow. I'm checking this, okay? So uh, this build was all, which I think is kind of cool, <laughs> was a very strong reason to uh, reject the paper because, uh, yeah. Um, and then we tried to kind of uh, understand, okay, why does it happen? Okay, and then talk, okay, so maybe some words are more predictive of long sentences. Okay, so we try this. Uh, so here we have uh, the results. Um, so one line is for like in, in sentences, and the other line is basically is basically sentences with, with uh, same length but uh, random words. And it does slightly worse, but it does also pretty well. Okay, um, and yeah, uh, we do have uh, the real expression for it, but this will wait for later, okay? And kind of keep you in suspect. Well, that, that, I think, uh, is really cool that you can actually, uh, that uh, Siva will manage to encode that. Yes? So I don't know if this is a fair comparison, but if you, if you ran, like, just a lossy compression algorithm on sentences, and you, and you cap the number of bits that you could compress to the length, the size of the vectors correspondingly, you would, like, you would be able to theoretically then extract the sentence back out of it, right? Would be. And so, would that would that allow you to base? I mean, because in some part, some in some sense, the amount of dimensions is also a question of the amount of information that you can store in the in the in the vectors, right? And so, like, you could construct a representation and see if it's I believe upper you bounded or not. Well, so the question is if that would bound the performance of the testing like or not. Uh, we don't know what the thing can do. I mean, we really don't we really don't understand that part of the of the problem. We don't know if it can do better or worse than compression. I basically I 
get, I get bet it on, they can do much well than compression, but it's optimal for now. But uh, I don't know. Sorry. Yeah. You said the, the baseline or the, the, the kind of naive baseline was 22 percent. Is this a bin? Yeah, it's a bin. Uh, so now eight bins, and then the majority class is 22 percent. And the so majority class. So I'm just wondering if uh, you know the sentences of different lens are will occupy different dimensional sub-manifolds of the space. Uh, or actually this, some predictive signal. Uh, this could be, but we have. I mean, I have to. Let's go to that. Okay, I can show you why it works. And actually, uh, in retrospect, it's it's very uh, logical. But yeah, it's it's, it's a surprise, and I'm kind of happy to learn this from this experiment because that's kind of how it works. Okay. Uh, so now uh, let, let, let's look at the, uh, at the content prediction. So basically you have a sentence and a word. Okay, and you want to know is this word in the sentence. Okay, uh, and there, uh, so we get between 70 and 80% accuracy. And the interesting thing here is that we actually uh, get better uh, results for this uh, with the uh, like fuel dimension. So if you go from 50 to 1000, we get some drop, although blue goes up if you uh, look at the, at the reconstruction. And our guess is that what happens is that uh, we, when we have more dimensions, somehow the decoder takes over and kind of um, fit, like, manages to fill in more information, and then you don't need to actually store it in this vector. Okay, so, and that's kind of also not, like, nice to see that you can actually, uh, maybe um, judging by blue is not optimal, and, maybe, and also by dimension is not optimal. Okay, and uh, and uh, Siba over here is doing, well, it's kind of weird that it does uh, worse at high dimensions, we're not sure why, but at least uh, with a few dimensions, it does much better. So if you uh, want to have your content and content, then you should use Siba and not STF, I guess. Yes? Just a quick, the decoder always has the same size as the encoder? Yes. Okay, so uh, Silvio is somehow better at, uh, at, okay, for the remote. And now uh, for the word order test, okay? Uh, so uh, we can actually uh, do word order uh, pretty well, like minus accuracy, uh, when we get to the uh, thousand dimension. I imagine that the, uh, miss, the missing 10% or some like of it is based on your question, like if they, uh, like what are valid, what happens? Maybe it's also there, but, like, but it does order pretty well. Uh, and then SIBO. How well will SIBO do? Now, uh, I, um, yeah. I would imagine it would be 50, right? Because it really has to do a random guess because it doesn't do any old, but it just does uh, average. Oh, yeah. uh, but it does around 70 or 66. Uh, and that's also surprised us. Okay? Um, but for this, we have actually a much better explanation. Uh, some words tend to appear for others, yeah. right? Uh, so now we said, okay, so what if we train on the words alone without the sentence? Okay, that's like given two words, can you uh, predict which one appeared before the other one? Okay, and then the, the results are around 67. Okay. You're using the embeddings from the LSTM. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, and what we see here is, okay, so uh, this phenomenon that some words tend to appear before others, uh, definitely uh, accounts for most of the difference, but you still get some gain, right, from the symbol. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that, so I guess the thing here is that uh, the fact that you know what other words are in the sentence can give you an extra hint on which word appeared before the other one. Okay, but uh, all in all, uh, it says that symbol uh, is much smarter than we thought, and it could explain various things that we see. Uh, with the Sorry, just another clarification. Your max like word sentence length is eight, eight words. No. Oh, okay. So I thought I thought before you said that. So it could no, be. No. Uh, yeah. We have I think uh, up to fifty words, and then uh, we bin them for the length in oh, the okay, eight size bins. Uh, oh, eight size bins. Okay. Is Sibo context given word or word given context? Which one is it? Uh, uh, Sibo just uh, turned out to VEC, and I think it was the the the, the skip crumbs, but then just uh, some. Yeah, so, so what is skip crumbs? Is it like you're predicting the context given the word, or word it's given symmetric. context? It's symmetric. It's symmetric. Oh, I see. But, but like, why do you ask? So because a loss is, in one case a loss is coming, you're, you're, you're propagating the losses from 
the context words. In the other case, you're probably you're, you're, the loss is coming from the middle word. Yeah, right? okay. why does it matter for this? So which one are you predict? Which one are you? Uh, sorry, I didn't get that. Why does it matter for this experiment? I'm just so it depends because uh, where, where are you picking the embeddings from? Are you picking them? Are you picking the embeddings of the input words? Are you picking the embeddings of the output words? Do they have different behaviors with respect to this experiment? So here we we take the output of AutoVec, okay, which are uh, the words that um, are the input words, but it's symmetric, so it doesn't really it, it, it shouldn't matter. Okay, but you can uh, do it later. I can show you why it's symmetric. Okay. Um, so word identities can uh, get you quite far, uh, but Siva still has something about order, which is I think it's nice to see. Okay, and now uh, for our kind of, uh, last question in, in this work was, uh, does, uh, are these things learning to represent English or just sequences? Like, does it matter if we give it English sentences or just like stuff? Okay, uh, so what we did is we used the, the, the present encoder, but we evaluate them on uh, permutations. Okay, so basically we take this encoder that uh, learned to encode English, then we feed it some uh, some permutation, fence, other jumps, the fox there, okay? And we ask, does fence appear before fox? Yeah. Okay? In, in this sentence. Yeah. Uh, in this encoding, right? And if you it can recover that, then it means that it doesn't really care about English. It only cares about a sequence, right? And if you can't recover that, then yeah, then uh, English matters. Okay, so like, uh, how sensitive is this thing to English? Okay, uh, and for the uh, length prediction, okay, so uh, we have on top the uh, LCM and on the bottom the CBA. So CBA really didn't change because well, let let all the other matter because it's uh, CBA. Uh, and uh, for the length, it also mostly didn't change. I'm not sure what happened there with this the bump, but I think it's an artifact of something. I mean, I, like the others are too close. To yeah, yeah. Uh, for content prediction, we also have this length. Well, basically, you can recover uh, the world uh, also on the uh, permutation, okay? Uh, and uh, for the other position, okay, so now uh, the uh, the CBAO is a chance level because it doesn't have the text information about which world appeared before the other world, but the STM does slightly worse, but not much so, okay? And if you're looking at a, a thousand dimension, it's actually, is very close. There, okay, so basically what it says uh, is that the auto encoder LCM does not really care what it encodes. Give it anything and it will produce something which will recover these things. Okay? Uh, but if you look at the uh, blue scores of the recovery, then they really drop. Okay? Uh, so, the, so basically the decoder part of this thing uh, is in charge of doing the right uh, um, English so, so the decoder is very much sensitive, but the encoder just you know, give a sequence, it will work on that. Even though it was very not true. But I think it's kind of cool to see. Yes. Uh, should this effect depend on the length of the sentence? So the short for shorter sentences permutation actually won't matter that much because context will be local. It's a good question, we didn't check. I think you can test your hypothesis if you build a encoder decoder machine translation system. Yeah. Where instead of the encoder, you just do CBAL, and then you take your mean yeah. representations produced in the manner you've shown here, and you decode the foreign mm -hmm. sentence from that, right? Yeah. Or, and, the, and the question is, can you get close to the state of the art? That's say. a great question. Uh, the reason I didn't uh, try to do empty stuff is that I don't trust myself to train them well. So I would be happy to talk to you guys uh, if you have some experience, because I mean, I just I'm pretty sure that uh, whatever you that would get. It's an interesting hypothesis. You're saying, yeah. you're saying essentially it doesn't, it doesn't matter how you create that meaning representation, right? It well, be as dumb I'm as a C ball. I'm, I'm not saying it, it, it doesn't matter, but like for this guy, it's like uh, I can see it doesn't really do much. Okay, now if we go uh, along, um, we also tried this uh, uh, skittles vector. So this vector is basically you uh, encode a sentence and then you uh, you train it to predict the next one, okay, and the previous one. Okay, so it's a nice uh, work. And then when we uh, did uh, there the the the, uh, the 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 test, now it's this red line because they're uh, uh, pre-trained, so they have like only 
a fixed rotational vector, and we do see a larger growth in all of these, okay, in all of the cases, which means basically that uh, the uh, script of encoder does care about English, and it does care what it encodes, and it's much harder for it to encode uh, non-English language. Okay, so we just learn something meaningful. I'm not saying uh, what we can do with this information, but uh, now we know that uh, LSTM encoder uh, encodes vector Z. Uh, if you care about all the entity, you should prefer SIBO. If you care about all the order, the LSTMs are really, really good. Uh, you can recover quite a bit of all the order from SIBO, which is surprising. Um, and LSTM encoder doesn't really rely on the virtual language if it's an auto encoder. Uh, but uh, but the script uh, uh, does. Okay, so we learned something. It's a thing which I, I mean, I think it's cool. Okay, so that was this work. Uh, now let's go back to uh, bad games and have a very uh, short time, so I'll be quick. Okay, so uh, this is about multitask learning. Uh, and the idea here is okay, so we have this like, problem where we want to uh, have post tagging, and we have that one where we want to uh, do chunking, so uh, chunk tables. And um, the thing is that, okay, different uh, NLP have, uh, tasks have uh, shared structures, and maybe you can somehow, uh, like, hints for doing uh, tagging would help us for chunking and that way around. <coughs> so maybe we want to do uh, one network to do both things and it will um, kind of uh, work better. Okay? So that's the way it, uh, it looks. People did this before, so we have your uh, bias DMs. And then at the end, you have uh, two different classifiers, one of them uh, for code, one of them uh, for, for chunking. And all of these uh, kind of uh, cells in the middle are uh, trained to do well on both tasks. Okay? Uh, and uh, that's a nice story. Uh, we found that it was not so easy to get it to work. Okay? Uh, for many pairs, there was no good doors, so you really have to ch uh, choose good pairs. Uh, if the network is not wide enough, this actually helps because it has to. Uh, it, you, ask it to encode more information in a small space and uh, succeed. Uh, and if you have more in-task data, it's better than more tasks. But still, uh, we can um, do something that, that actually works there for some tasks. And then we even improve by uh, taking this little trick or uh, uh, way of thinking. So we say, okay, we know that there is uh, sometimes some hierarchy uh, uh, between tasks. So why don't you use this? Okay, so basically what we say, okay, so we have, so here we, uh, we predict chunks and post tags, but we know that uh, post tags are some, some kind of uh, lower level task than chunks. So maybe we should train the lower level layer to have post tags and then have the other one to do chunks. Okay, so now we have uh, one layer that is uh, trained for post, but it uh, gets feedback also from the chunks, so it's good for both. And then the two other, the, the upper layers, are uh, good for chunking, uh, but they are also using uh, the, uh, the code information from this uh, encoder. Okay? Uh, and if you do this, you actually get better results. So you can uh, improve. Yes? Do you train them serially, or do you first layer, then second layer, or do you train everything together? So, okay, so, uh, so the way they are trained is I get uh, a sentence, and it has either pause or chunk labels. If it has chunks, I do all the way up and then uh, back up all the way down. And if I have pause, I uh, do one layer up and then move it back. Okay. okay, but with the same matrices. Can that not better than just training first the lower la layers make, to set them sort of... Uh, uh, no, I think it's better to do it uh, okay. in the line because then it can learn to adapt to each other, basically. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, and yeah, so doing this way is better. So it uh, managed to improve the chunking. Uh, in pause and also on uh, uh, CCG pause, and this number for CCG are kind of low if you compare to what you did around here a while ago, uh, but at least we got a nice improvement with uh, the, the different methods. Oh, sorry. Have you tried to reverse the two? Yeah, well, you, you assume the hierarchy, but what about if you do the other way around? Does it, uh, does it do much, much, much worse? I mean, I would assume it would be uh, very It does much worse for, for CCG, yes. Uh, so if, or, or for chunk. So if you care about the okay. second one, Okay, uh, it will do better for uh, post tagging if you put the, the pause on top, but uh, you usually don't really care about post tagging. You only care about them because you want to get the chunks of the CCG tags. So, yeah. Okay, and we also did that uh, for a cool setup with, uh, with certain compression. So uh, the top is trained uh, to uh, decide which word to drop, and then 
the neural layer is trained for, for CGD pseudotypes, like for syntax, and for eye tracking. And, and there is a talk about that in Akel uh, by Sidri. Uh, we also get a short this, uh, base paper award for that. So we just come and look and give that there. Okay, but it's a really cool uh, talk. And that kind of uh, wraps up what I want to say about uh, multi scanning. Basically, it's easy to do, uh, and, it's, and it can work in some cases, but you should think about how do you. Uh, where do you put your um, uh, signal? Okay, do you want to put it all on the same level or different level? And kind of, it's kind of task specific. Let's like think of how do you want to uh, think of things. Okay, now we also have this uh, passing mode, which I do very, very uh, quickly, but I want to get to the last part. Uh, and okay, so uh, Google had this uh, uh, announcement recently where they have the world's most accurate parcel for open source. And our parcel is actually better and faster and run on one uh, CPU and are faster. Uh, but uh, they can do uh, GPU and even better, but um, we didn't do it yet. Okay, uh, so um, the way we uh, do it, okay, so I'll go, I'll uh, skip over how you do uh, parsing in general, and then I just say that, okay, so basically you want to uh, have a score for each of your arcs, okay, and then you want to uh, train it such that the tree with the maximal arcs will have the, uh, the best uh, uh, score, okay? Uh, and the way we do it here is that basically the features uh, for each arc, okay, are simply the BIOSDM vectors of the world uh, at the arc um, uh, size, okay? So uh, here we have uh, jumped and Fox, that's the arc, okay? So we just uh, fit both of these into the, um, the, uh, the concatenation there, Okay, now, now we have our, our uh, feature vector uh, for this arc, and we have an MLP and we have a score. Okay, and if you want to, uh, to score the, the other way around, just like uh, do the other concatenation. And if you want to do uh, Fox in order, we do this and uh, jump in order. And we just kind of, uh, so basically our uh, features for each arc are just uh, these uh, bias DS vectors. Okay, and this can encode quite a lot. So we have an infinite window around uh, the head world, and an infinite <laughs> window around the modified world. We have the uh, distance between them, because it can do them, apparently. Uh, we have uh, all of the uh, all of the world between them, and basically we have all that we need, okay, uh, to do uh, uh, good passing. And at the end, we just like, when we uh, come to uh, uh, score three, we just, for each arc, we take the uh, two uh, by the vectors, uh, fit them to an MLP, sum them, and we have the uh, score of the tree, and this thing is very jointly, okay? Uh, so we want to have a good uh, passing, or we want a good tree to be uh, scored uh, above a bad tree, okay? And this back propagates all the way back uh, to the, um, to the bias DM layer, okay? Uh, and in passing, you just run your uh, bias DM first, okay? And then you have vectors, and then you, uh, for each pair, you uh, fill it to the MLP, have a score, and then do decoding as usual. Okay, and in training, you just try to uh, uh, maximize this and, uh, and back up all the way back. Okay, uh, and uh, when we uh, do this, we get really nice uh, uh, results. Our best results, I'm not going into the details, but 93.8% uh, uh, UAS, so it's under accuracy. Uh, for a first order parcel, so it doesn't do any kind of uh, clever thing with that, only first order parcel, it's pretty strong, and we don't have any, uh, any external stuff, okay? Uh, and yeah, it's, it's nice for something. I think. Uh, we have more research in the paper, we're not going to do it now, okay? And we also do, do a very similar thing for a, a position based parcel, okay? And if you don't know them, never mind. But basically, the same thing, like the uh, biased DMs of the world, uh, Compatibility to an MLP, and you get a uh, really different parcel which is greedy and works very, very well. Okay? Uh, so, bias scans are really, really good uh, future extractors. Yes? So can I just ask, do you know what the, like, the human performance is on the parsing? And secondly, uh, what are like cases where, where this fails? Where this fails? Yeah, I mean, it, the 6% of the cases are wrong, right? So oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's so, that's just a parsing question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, human performance is Depends which human. Uh, some are really good, some are really bad. Okay, so. Uh, Let's say the best human. 
No, like, uh, no, no, like, like 98, I guess, uh, because you have differences. But uh, no, they, they didn't know uh, uh, pretty well. It's also in domain, so uh, you'll, you'll get uh, low scroll out of domain. And where parsing fails is uh, all over the place. So like, uh, uh, but if you want to kind of uh, fix on one, then PP attachment is hard, uh, coordination is hard. Uh, we have several things which are harder than, than others. Uh, I'll skip on that, but we have a nice way to do uh, tree encodings. Uh, yeah. uh, and then the last thing I want to uh, talk is that uh, uh, um, work in progress, but uh, again, part of this understanding uh, part of things. Okay, uh, so let's work with uh, tarians then. And then we're trying to see, like, uh, do we really need to worry about trees, or maybe we can just uh, get all of the syntax from the SDN because we can learn everything. Uh, and this is basically, this for me started with this uh, uh, blog post by uh, Anika Patti where it showed that when you uh, generate um, for, uh, like C code from this uh, uh, language model that was trained on C code uh, based on the, on the characters, you get this uh, well nested stuff and implementation. So it uh, clearly, uh, so that kind of got me really into SDN so it was powerful, okay, much more than any other language that, that I knew. Uh, and it learned something about grammar, but then I thought, okay, so can we do a more uh, control experiment about something which we actually care about, and not C code, but like English, okay? Uh, and then we kind of started how, how, would, how are we going to do this? And then we said, okay, so uh, some natural language uh, phenomena are indicative of syntax, okay? In, uh, in particular, we can focus on uh, agreement between verbs and, and subject. Okay, so say the boy kicks the ball and the boys kick the ball. Okay, so uh, plural and, uh, and singular. And of course this thing can be really uh, far apart in the sentence and you will have the same agreement mechanism. Okay, so uh, boy has to agree with kicks, or so, sorry, the kicks has to agree with boy. Okay, so uh, kick, so the number of the verb kick is determined by boy, okay, by its subject. And uh, if uh, there is a uh, uh, stuff in the middle, then it can be really uh, far apart. But if you uh, look at the uh, three there, then they're really close by. Okay, so uh, that's kind of uh, this for, for meaning with a good indication that there is syntax. Okay, that, or like uh, if you want to do this well, uh, you need to take account uh, of some uh, energy. Okay, uh, so we have this task where we uh, take a, a, a sentence okay, from Wikipedia. We replace rare words with the uh, plural styles, okay, so we got this. Then we uh, choose some verb, it's the verb R over here, and we choose one that we know that has a, a subject based on our parser, okay, but it doesn't really need to be this way. And then we just uh, cut this uh, sentence without the verb, okay, and then uh, we have this uh, task where we have to decide is it plural or singular, okay. And uh, the answer here is, is plural. Why? Because uh, figures, okay, uh, is uh, plural, and that's uh, the main thing. And, and how do we know that? Because we, uh, in our head, we pass the sentence, and we know that uh, uh, figures is the right noun, even though we have history and uh, philosophy and some other uh, uh, similar noun in between uh, that may confuse us if we don't know about syntax. So if you just like look the kind of uh, closest noun will fail, okay, at least in this case. Okay, so in order to, to do this, we need to learn both uh, what, what the number is, like th that there is something that called plural or, uh, or singular, and we need to know to identify who the uh, subject is. Okay, so it's kind of a static task. Yes? Um, just, uh, do you think that there is some confounder if your plural and the Singular uh, distractors are not semantically similar. Well, we don't know what the verb is, right? So it's. Ah, oh, you don't see the. You know, no, no, yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's really, I have to decide what the. Uh, yeah. I mean, I see what you mean, but here we don't see the verb. Okay, okay. okay. and actually, yes, yeah, we, we kind of found that they couldn't, but they should do quite well. Uh, so they do 90% uh, accuracy, but uh, most nouns are actually very easy because you just like look at the last noun and it works. Uh, and if we uh, and actually uh, 
if we look at the cases where uh, there, there are no nouns between them, okay, and then if you, then even if you go to uh, really uh, long distance, like up to 15 words between the, the noun and the verb, it will really dry. Okay, like basically zero error. Okay, but then we say, okay, but uh, when we uh, look at the cases where we have at least one noun uh, between uh, the, the, the verb and the subject, it could be either the uh, same na uh, number or, uh, or the opposite one, then we get the same accuracy. It's also pretty high. Okay, so this thing, actually, it learns pretty well to the syntax. Uh, if you kind of uh, uh, cluster the nouns based on the, the vectors, you see that it, that it learned uh, the kind of uh, number for nouns based on only this provision, which is kind of cool. I mean, the details are strong. Um, and uh, what we did manage to see is that if we kind of look for cases where we have many intervening PCA on the word to vector vectors? No, on the uh, vectors that are portrayed uh, with this task. So you have an SDM with the, the, the sentence. Okay, it was uh, a
in order to pack more information about the words of any average than all uh, right, yeah. information. But you can, can check, check if, you yeah, can check check. if lower dimension of embeddings have higher magnitude yeah, than average. That's a good point. We can check that. Is the implication from here that you should really never be just kind of smashing yeah. words together? So, I mean, this is basically like losing information. <laughs> well, I can still predict the whole content better than the SDM, so completely. So I'm not sure. Yeah, because for that one specific thing, right? Like, like, well, actually, I actually had just a randomly initialized vector. It's a really, really long sentence, right? What do you mean? Oh, no, uh, no, okay. Uh, for length, you're building things you want, but, but you kind of gain length information. But if you want to know, like, does this word uh, appear in the sentence, turns out that you can do it pretty well, or like better than you can do it with the SDMs. Uh, so, you're, so you're not using that much. Now, why don't you use that much? I don't know. <laughs> like, how does it work? I'm not sure, but it's some, well, it's arguable, and it, kind of, it, it shouldn't lose, but yeah, it's, it's all kind of, uh,